Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. Increasing P.E. ratios. How much is too much? I don't know, but we'll find out soon with Kevin Matris, head of the Research Wizard Division, because that's what this week's Screen of the Week is all about. It sounds interesting here, but just a short while ago, you know, everyone was talking about P.E. ratios dropping to the single digits. Now, lately, I'm hearing P.E. ratios have gone in the opposite direction and have been heading higher. Right. Uh, I'm confused. Well, check this out. Since March 6th of 2009, when the lows were put in for the S&P 500, uh, the market has rallied 28.6% as of the close of business yesterday, which was April 27th. Mm -hmm. Its P.E. ratio during that same time is up 25.4%. What's interesting, though, is taking a look at the F1 estimates. The F1 estimates are up only 0.098%, or let's just call it 1%. All right. That is a big move without any real upward revisions to estimates. Now, I know the market was depressed. I know P.E. ratios were beaten down. Uh, in fact, if you were to look at the P.E. ratio from October of 2007 when we put in the high mm -hmm. all the way to March of 2009, the P.E. ratios actually collapsed by roughly 33%. But now the P.E. ratios are on the upswing. And again, they're up over 25%. But I wonder if seeing such a large increase in multiples at this stage of the game, given where we are on earnings, if that's really warranted. Well, that's the question you're supposed to answer. Right. So lower P.E.s then are better than higher P.E.s? Yes and no. Uh, some stocks with higher P.E.s are higher and they're justified because of their accelerating growth rate. Other times you look at stocks with very low PEs, but they're low because there isn't any real growth to speak of. Everything being equal, you would want to see a lower multiple. Uh, but again, all stocks are not created equal. Uh, but in general, seeing PEs increase is relatively healthy because uh, if, uh, by the way, that, that assumes you're seeing uh, earnings increase. Okay. But seeing PEs go up is decent because that suggests people are willing to pay more for growth because they believe that the growth is going to increase and paying for growth is going to cost them more in the future. Uh, in other words, higher P.E. ratios. Uh, but again, this only makes sense if you're seeing earnings follow suit. Now again, whether those earnings materialize is a completely different story. Uh, but again, I believe that, uh, that looking at increasing PEs does show that there is a greater appetite for risk, and it at least suggests that people are believing that things will get better in the not-too-distant future. However, getting back to this article, this screen is trying to find companies whose PE ratios have increased less than the S&P 500, believing that if the macro environment for PEs is going higher, if I can find companies whose PEs have increased less than the S&P, that gives it more room to grow, thus potentially seeing an outsized increase in prices. And how, Osage One, are you doing this? <laughs> Check this out. Uh, we've got a screen here, and what I'm doing is I'm using the benchmark for the S&P 500 and the P.E. ratio. The benchmark I'm using is the P.E. ratio from March 6 of 2009 to April 27th of 2009. In March, it was 11.16 for the S&P, and the P.E. ratio on April 27th was 13.99. That is a 25.4% increase. Mm -hmm. So effectively, we're really looking for companies whose P.E. ratios have increased less than 25.4. Okay. But here's how we do it in the screen. The first item is I'm looking for companies whose increase in P.E. from that time frame, 36.09 to 4.27.09, mm -hmm. has increased less than the S&P 500. Then the next item is I want the Zacks rank to be less than or equal to three. So again, strong buys, buys, and even holds. No sells or strong sells. Mm -hmm. I want the projected annual growth rate to be greater than the S&P 500. I want the projected quarterly growth rate to be greater than the S&P 500. And then I want the earnings estimate revisions to be up as well. I want the percent change in Q1 earnings estimates over the last four weeks to be greater than zero. And I want the percent change in F1 earnings estimates over the last four weeks to be greater than zero as well. So 
you have your PE increase less than the S&P, but they're beating the market on growth rates, beating the market uh, on upward earnings estimate revisions, and I believe that sets up a very, very good situation. All right, and what about some stocks that made it through the screen this week? There were a bunch of stocks. Here's five of them. You've got Hanson Natural, uh, Ixis Corp, Nutrisystem, SonicWall, and Sterling Construction. All of these companies, they are from very diverse industries, but what's interesting is that all of these companies have positive projected growth rates. They have all seen their earnings estimate revised up, but again, their P.E. ratios have increased less than the S&P 500, and I think these are definitely companies to put on your radar screen. All right, do you own any? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to see the text version of this week's Screen of the Week so you can ponder those parameters a little bit longer, then go to Zacks.com's homepage and follow it down the page, your cursor that is, until you get to Kevin's picture. Click on the headline that's right next to it and it'll take you right to it. And don't forget that Kevin uses the very powerful Research Wizard backtesting software program to achieve all of his screens. It's a screening program as well. Kind of does a lot of different things. Check it out at zax.com forward slash research wizard if you want to get those screens on your computer just like Kevin puts on his. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.